Welcome back to the Brookings Biology um, video PowerPoint about macromolecules. In our first two PowerPoints, we have learned about carbohydrates and proteins. In this video, we're going to look at our third kind of macromolecule, which is lipids. Lipids are made mainly out of carbon and hydrogen. We saw those atoms also in carbohydrates and in our proteins in our first two slideshows. What makes lipids very different from the other three macromolecules is they have very few oxygen atoms. Remember, carbon can make some very different shapes of molecules. They can make long chains, they can make rings, and we see both of those shapes of molecules in this lipid group. Look at this first example lots of carbons and hydrogens in a big long chain, but very few oxygens. Remember when we talked about carbs, they had a ratio of one to two to one. The carbons and the oxygens were equal to each other. In a lipid, carbons and hydrogens make up the majority of the molecule and very few oxygens. And remember in a water molecule, oxygens are what make that molecule into a polar molecule. More electrons going around the oxygens than the hydrogens attached to it. And so molecules that have more hydrogens and oxygens together in a molecule are very polar molecules. So look at this lipid molecule. Very few oxygens, carbons and hydrogens, and the hydrogens are equally spread out attached to those carbons. It's not a very polar molecule. In fact, it's what we call a very nonpolar molecule. Another pattern that we see in some kinds of lipids is the ring shaped. If you look at this ring, it's showing you the overall shape of the molecule. And part of that ring, everywhere we have a corner in our hexagon, we have a carbon atom. Carbon, 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 carbon. This also is a molecule with lots of carbons and hydrogens, but very few oxygens. And this shape molecule, where we have these four ring-shaped parts to it, is called a steroid. And steroids also are kinds of lipids. So lipids are different from the other groups of molecules that we've learned about because they are very nonpolar. And that makes them also very phobic. They don't like to be near or touch or hang out with polar molecules like water. So what do lipids do for us? One thing they do is to make this molecule. We saw this in our earlier slideshow when we did a little chemistry and we talked about those ideas of polar and nonpolar. This molecule is a phospholipid. Look at the name. It's got lipid right in the name. It's telling you it's a kind of a lipid molecule. And remember from our uh, previous slide, those long chains of carbons and hydrogens together. This is a long chain. This is the part of the molecule that's a lipid. And remember the overall shape, it kind of has this head on top and very long, we call lipid, tails. This is the part of the molecule that's very phobic. Look at the top though. We have oxygens here and we have a phosphorus. That's where the phospholipid comes from. Phosphorus group in this part of the molecule is very polar. It's a polar head, but the tails that hang down are very nonpolar. Remember, polar things like to hang out and be near and touch water. In nonpolar molecules are the opposite. They want to stay away from water. They're very phobic. So this molecule acts in some very unusual and very special ways in living things because the different parts of the water of the molecule in a phospholipid want to behave very differently around water. What we use phospholipids for, along with some other steroids like cholesterol in animal cells, is to build cell membranes. Remember when we talked about proteins and some of the things that proteins do in our protein slideshow? Proteins, along with phospholipids, make up the majority of a cell membrane. So if this is my cell membrane, Here's those little heads with tails, the little phospholipids, and they go together with protein molecules to make a cell membrane. And what cell membranes do, that idea that I don't like to be near water, I don't want to touch water, it causes the 
phospholip is to line up in a way so the part that doesn't like water is on the inside, away from the water inside the cell and outside the cell. And they line up in the middle, kind of making a sandwich. We're going to talk later about how that works when we get to our chapter about cell parts. But it's important that those lipid molecules don't like water. Think about what would happen if we built a cell membrane out of molecules that liked water, that could dissolve in water. Our cell membranes, our cells would dissolve. We wouldn't have anything to make the container, to make the boundary between inside the cell and hold things in and separate it from outside the cell if we didn't make our cell membranes out of molecules that were very phobic, that didn't like water, that didn't dissolve in water. And so phospholipids are, um, are molecules that go together to make cell membranes, and lipids are very phobic molecules of all the big four molecules that are on our list, proteins, carbs, nucleic acids, lipids. Lipids are the only group of macromolecules that are very nonpolar, very phobic. They don't like water, and that's important for maintaining cells. Another thing that lipids can do for us is they're used to store energy for long term. Remember in our carb part of our slideshow, we talked about loading up your glycogen stores, your sugar bank. And when we eat sugar, the first place that cells put the extra sugar is for short-term storage as glycogen. Animals store glycogen, remember? Plants store starch. It's a way to store sugar for later, but short-term storage. Remember, we load glycogen, we carb load before a big game, so that when we're running the next day, we are going to be able to access those sugar stores um, when we need to call on them when we're doing our, our athletics, our activities. But if we have more sugar than we need to um, fill our glycogen bank, where that extra calories, those extra sugar molecules go, is they get stored as lipids, as fat in our body. And that's our backup storage for sugar. So long-term energy storage, we put it into lipids, into fat in our body. That's why when we exercise, you have to exercise for at least 20 minutes before we actually start to lose weight. And the reason is the beginning when we start to exercise, we're using up those glycogen stores that are have glucose stored for short-term energy. And we don't lose weight, we don't lose fat until we break into our lipid stores, our fat stores in our body. And so it takes a little while of burning up our, all of our glycogen before we access our lipids. But it's used for long-term energy storage. Another thing that lipids are really good at doing is insulation. If you think about a nerve cell, the job of a nerve cell is to transmit an electric signal all along the body. It's got to send the message from here all the way down to the end. Think about sending an electric signal in a wire to insulate the wire, to hold the signal inside and not let it get out along the way, we put coatings, we put rubber or plastic on our wire, and nerve cells kind of have the same thing. They have a molecule called myelin. It's made by these little cells that wrap around the nerve body, or the nerve um, axon. And this part of the nerve that's transmitting the message has myelin, it's a coating made by these cells that cover the nerve and act like insulation, just like um, insulating a wire. They keep the nerve message, the electric message, inside so it can pass along the, the, the nerve. And so insulation of nerve cells is, um, comes from lipid molecules called myelin that wrap around and protect the nerve. Lipids are also really good at insulating body heat. They help to maintain your temperature. And that helps with that other idea, that vocab word from our very first chapter, keeping the balance in your body. We don't like it too hot, too cold, too much sugar, too little water, too acid. All of those things, your body works to maintain stable internal conditions, a balance in the body. And maintaining your body temperature is one of those things that your body works to do. It helps with that homeostasis. Think about animals that live in very cold places and have to swim in cold water. 
think walruses, whales, they store fat to help them stay warm in cold. We call it blubber. Blubber is, is fat stores, and those fat stores are not only used for energy, we can burn them for energy, but having that blubber in your body helps to maintain and insulate you against cold temperatures. Lipids can also be these shapes, and we talked about that in our very first lipid slide. Not only can lipids be long chains of carbons and hydrogens, but we can make them into ring shapes. And this basic ring shape, the four, um, four look like little uh, hexagons here, and this little looks like a little, a little house. Um, this shape of molecule is called a steroid. And examples of some kinds of steroids that your body's, your body uses are hormones. They act as hormones in your body. They come from a molecule called cholesterol. Cholesterol is a steroid. And you may have heard in the, in, about cholesterol, and we often think of cholesterol as a bad thing, that too much cholesterol in our, um, can clog up our arteries and cause heart disease. But cholesterol is a molecule needed by cells. It's made in animal cells. It helps to build cell membranes. And cholesterol is the basic building block we add molecules to to make different kinds of steroid hormones. So if you look, each of these kind of have that same ring structure, but we've added different groups to make different steroid hormones. Some examples. Testosterone is a steroid hormone. It's a male sex hormone. That's the hormone that kicks in at puberty and causes those body changes to happen to guys like growing facial hair and bulking up their muscles. He, uh, females have um, steroid hormones as well. Estrogen and progesterone are important um, hormones that maintain your reproductive system and cause those body changes to make it so that you're able to have kids to reproduce. And those are hormones. They're lipid hormones. That's the end of lipids. Stay tuned for our last molecule, which is coming in our next slideshow.